Hi, this is the Balkan Architect and in this video I will show you how you can model and set all the parameters for a parametric table family in Revit. So we're creating something like this. This is basically a table for two, but when we go into properties panel, we can change it in a table for four or a table for six or eight or ten. So I'm just going to show you how you can model this geometry and how you can set up all the parameters. This will be a two-part series because I'm guessing that some of you maybe already know how to do the geometry part. So if you don't want to see the geometry, which will be in this part one, you can just skip on to part two, with the link is in the description below. And in part two, I will show you how you can set up all the formulas necessary to create this parametric family. So now let's create this family or basically just the geometry. So I'm going to go here into the start menu, go new, new family, and I'm not going to save this. So first I'm going to skip back and go into English metric and just find the generic model. So first we'll need to model the chair because the chair will be a nested family inside of the table family. So first let's just create a chair. I'm just going to select this center reference plane, make one here, one here, do the same thing here and here. And now let's add some dim lines. So I'm just going to go dimension like so and this one here. And I'm just going to select this and go EQ that basically makes these two distances equal. And this dim line will basically control the size of this here dimension. So I'm going to do the same one here. And this is the equal, equal one and this is the parameter basically. I'm going to select these two and because I want to have basically a square chair I'm going to create a new parameter called let's just call it the seat size go OK and let's immediately go here into family types and change this to let's say 400 millimeters which is the standard basically kitchen chair. OK now once we've done that we can go into front view if you can't see anything just type in ZA for zoom all and you will get this. I'm going to select one reference plane go see it CS for create similar and create basically these two horizontal reference planes and these will be the chair height so this will be the seat height and this will be the backrest height so let's set this to 400 as well and this to maybe well let's go 400 as well so this will be new parameter called seat height ok and this will be backrest parameter let's just select it go so basically we can change this later if we want all through these parameters ok I'm just going to go ok and let's go back to floor plan and now let's start creating geometry. We'll go into the create tab let's just jump back into the front elevation and just name this reference plane seat. OK now go back to floor plan and now go create extrusion set the reference plane to seat so we can actually model in that reference plane. I'm going to go to the create tab go extrusion I'm just gonna go like so and then using the align tool I'm going to lock this in place. So just lock it to the outer reference planes like so and then for the extrusion end I'm just going to type in let's say 4 centimeters which will be 40 millimeters. Okay. 
go back to the front view to see what we have done. Okay, this is actually going up. I want it to go down, so I'm just going to type in minus 40. Okay, now let's go back to floor plan. Now let's create all the chair legs. So I'm going to go create, extrusion, rectangle, and I'm just going to create a small rectangle like so. I'm going to lock it to this plane over here, to this plane over here, and the size is 40 by 40 millimeters, which is quite okay for this. So I'm just going to select it, and then I'm going to go to the mirror tool, mirror it here, and again, mirror tool, mirror it around this axis. And now we need to lock everything in place, so I'm just going to use the align tool for that. AL is the shortcut, and then I select this one, select this one, lock it in place. Again, this reference plane, this line, lock it in place. I'm just going to speed this up so you don't have to watch everything. Okay, now what we're going to do, we're going to lock these two in place and do basically that on all sides. So, this to this, lock it in place, this to this, lock it in place, same thing here, lock it in place, here. So now go into dimensions and just select this and lock it, this one as well, lock it, and same thing here this one and this one, lock it, and here, and here, and lock it. Uh, I don't really need this one. And now, once we've done that, when we hit finish edit mode, and we when we go to front elevation, we can just use this grip over here, lock it to the floor, and this one lock it to the bottom of the seat, and then just go join geometry and join these two. Okay, now let's go into 3D view to see what we have done. It actually looks like a small table, but let's flex it and see what happens. So I'm just going to go to family types, make it a bit smaller, and let's just change the seat size to, I don't know, 500. Go apply, and you can see everything changes. Go back to maybe 300, Okay, looks quite good, so I'm going to leave it back at 400. Okay, let's just do the backrest and we're done. So, reference level, create, extrusion. I'm going to be using the rectangular extrusion again. And just place it like so and lock it to all outer reference planes. Now I'm going to select this line and type here maybe 30 millimeters. OK, and I'm just going to use the dimension tool in order to lock this dimension in place. OK, go back to modify create extrusion and finish it. Now we go back to front view. We can see it's already locked to this one. We just need to lock the back of the backrest or top of the backrest to this one and we're done. So now we're going to 3D looks like this but you can see actually this line over here I don't like that so I'm just going to go join geometry and join these two okay that's pretty much it let's just select it all so I'm going to hit tab select the whole chair and let's choose a material I don't know maybe walnut I don't know doesn't really matter okay okay and when we go into realistic here we have a basic simple wooden chair. Okay, let's just save that. So save, and I'm going to save on desktop for this. So let's call it chair family. Okay, save it, and we're done with the chair. Okay, let's go to the start menu, go new, family, and this will be the table family. I'm just going to go back here, go to the metric, find a metric generic model. Now you might be tempted here to go floor based because you're usually going to place your table on the floor but I suggest you use the generic model because sometimes 
you will place it somewhere where it won't be actually directly on a floor plane so I suggest you just go with generic model so I'm going to go open and here we have this thing so let's just select one reference plane go create similar and I'm going to be using the offset tool maybe I don't know like 450 this is in millimeters by the way and now basically we have the outer parameter of the table and now let's add some dimensions like so check here EQ and this one this will be the table length parameter and this will be the table width parameter okay I'm going to select this one go create parameter and let's just call this table width go OK and this one will be table length OK so now we have these two and let's just go into front elevation again if you don't see anything just type in ZA and you will basically zoom all select this or basically whatever reference plane go create similar and create the table height plane so I'm just going to place this at I don't know what is the fault let's call it 900 or it's maybe less maybe something like 700 and we have this dimension here so we can go into create parameter and call this table height So now we have that, so we're pretty much done with all the reference planes. We're, I'm just going to select this one and name it whatever. I can I just name it one. I just need the name. So I'm going to go back to floor plan and go create, extrusion, set the reference plane to that reference plane one, go OK. And I'm just going to use the rectangular tool and create a rectangle and just lock it in place on all sides and here I'm just going to type in minus 40 for the thickness go OK now when we go back in front elevation it looks fine so I'm just going to go back to reference plane or reference level so now let's just do the table legs so create extrusion and I'm going to be using the rectangle tool so this is exactly the same as the chair so I'm going to fast forward this so you don't have to watch it and let's just go into front elevation lock this down to the reference plane and lock this to the bottom of the table go into 3d view zoom all if you can't really see it and let's just join geometry okay so now we have the basic table and we have our chair family so I'm I'm going to stop right here and I'm going to continue in part 2 where I bring these two families together and do all the parameters and all the formulas in order to create a parametric table in Revit. Okay, see you in part 2.